Hey guys, this is Gio from Smart Makers, and in this Home Assistant tutorial video, we're going to look at groups. Why do we need to use groups? Where can we use them? And how we can configure them? Let's roll the intro. With groups, we can send a single command to multiple entities or devices. So, for example, if we have a lot of lights or light switches in a room, we can ask our voice assistant to turn them all on or tell them turn them all off. In alternative, you can also use these in your dashboard. You can group lights, for example, together, and that will be a light group, or you can group up motion sensors, and that will fall under groups. In my dashboard here, I have this little guy with a motion sensor. If I click on him, you can see I have various types of motion sensors in my home. I have clear, uh, basically meaning no motion, and detected would mean no motion. So anytime there's motion in any one of these sensors, then this whole sensor is triggered. So it's basically any of these triggers it all. Another example down below is groups of lights. So groups of lights are represented with these three symbols over here with these three light bulbs. And you can just command them all together. So you can turn all lights off and you can turn all lights on at the same time. You can go on the free double click, then you have the same settings like brightness and color and color temperature. Let me show you how we can create groups right now. To create groups, we're going to need to access our configuration files. You can do this with either the file editor, perhaps Samba Share, or Visual Studio Code. So I'm going to use Visual Studio Code in this video. Now, the first one we're going to do right here is motion. And this is going to be motion for the whole house. This could be motion in this section of your house. You can basically pick and choose whatever you want to do. So go to your groups.yaml and you'll find them wherever you've got your configurations.yaml. Groups.yaml, if you don't have it, you can create it. And just basically copy and paste the code that you can see over here. I'm going to link that. There's going to be a link in the description so you can actually get that quite quickly. So with YAML, you have the two spaces indentation as standard. The name, this is the name of the motion sensor um, that we're using, the icon. I'm using a MDI, so material design icon. And you can see the actual icon represented here in Visual Studio Code. You might not see that. You probably not see that in a file editor. And you just put entities. And here you start listing the entities. So bear in mind you put two spaces again. And you start listening with a dash. And you list all the entities' names. So you could just go dash. And then you could binary center. And you could pick another one. And you have the pick list right here with Visual Studio Code. And it makes it super easy. Once you've done that, you can save this file. And before you actually reload the groups, let me show you how you can actually do light groups. So the light groups are not actually done in the groups.yaml, they're done in the configuration.yaml, or at least I do them in the configuration.yaml. In the configuration.yaml file, you're going to need to add this line of code here, light, and then put column. And, and over here, you can ignore what I've got because I'm converting switches to light. And here you can see I've got a comment which I'm indicating this is where I'm starting doing light groups. And from line 94, you should be able to see this dash platform group. So these will be two spaces after that, the light. You can give it a name, kitchen and dining lights, for example, and entities. And here you have the entities that are wrapped around in this group, that are part of this group. So you can add more like I showed you previously, just space it out, dash, and you can add uh, something else in here. Bear in mind, you can only add lights in the uh, light group because they need to be obviously light, they need to be lights. If these are not originally lights, you can convert them from switches to lights, like you can do with this piece of code over here. You can use a platform switch, give it a name, and then the entity ID of the switch. Now you have another entity ID, ID with light.kitchen underscore seating underscore light. And then you can reference it, groups for example, to create another group after, on, underneath that, you can see here the line separation. So two spaces again, and you have platform group repeated, a new name. So this is going to be the hallway lights, hallway one, hallway two. And you can see I've got multiple groups and you can actually create groups of groups. So you can group together previous groups 
like I've got over here so I've got a ground floor light which is a group and at the moment it's it is the same as the kitchen and dining light but in here I could also include the downstairs hallway the garage garden whatever I wanted so you can play around with the groups and you can uh, get this all working now let me show you how you can actually use groups in your voice assistant now to do this if you have a Nabucaz subscription you'll be able to do this quite easily in the way that I'm showing you here jump into home assistant go to the go to configuration you'll see that cloud Nabucaz login at the top with your email address click on it and then you'd get into this page so we depending on whichever one you're using either the one from Amazon the one from Google you can do the same thing and you will click on manage entities you can see it you have managed entities here and managed entities over there. Clicking on manage entities, you'll go into and you can manage them one by one. But a very quick way of doing it is just click, clicking on manage domains. If you click on manage domains, you can enable groups. So by clicking this button, you will now have groups enabled. So for example, these were the motion groups that I showed you. So I think that's in groups.yaml. And you can also enable lights. Now by default, lights are enabled. So the light groups sit on the light. First floor lights, for example, this is a group, and this was already enabled before without me doing anything. So that's how you can actually use this. And you could also ask your voice assistant to, for example, turn off all of the lights in the, in the first floor or whatever you've called it. Those of you that are new to Home Assistant, I've got a free Home Assistant course, link down in the description down below. I will jumpstart your home assistant journey. If you want to help me out and you want to help out more people find out this video, then smash that like button. If you're interested in more content like this, then you can subscribe to the channel too. Now click on this next video to actually see how I'm creating my own home assistant dashboard from scratch. It's quite a long one, so go and get yourself a nice cup of coffee. Sit back, relax, and enjoy it. In the meantime, I'll see you in the next video. Peace.